So the recording is on. Welcome to BC314, our course on uh, media and technology. Let's take a moment just to pray and we will start. Prince, can you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you in this morning, Lord. We come once again <coughs> in your hand, Lord. Uh, as we're going to learn this subject, media and technology, Help us to learn and uh, this media and technology will help us in the ministry, Lord. Thank you. And your work will be uh, uh, more and more growing in this manner, Lord. Thank you. I pray and submit all the students also pastor in your hand. Give us uh, such revelation and wisdom so that we can understand. Thank you. I submit in this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we are now in uh, that section of the course where we are talking about uh, um, digital equipment uh, that we can use in the ministry. And uh, I'm just sharing some information um, to us, uh, more from the point of view of uh, leaders. Uh, uh, so we're not getting into, you know, how to use the equipment. That's not uh, um, the focus, but more on to get some general idea about the equipment because, uh, you know, as you're pastoring the church or leading a church or being involved in some form of Christian ministry in the Christian organization, and if, if you have to do some of this work, uh, the, the people will come, you know, you will be part of this, this these discussions uh, about buying the equipment. Sometimes you have to rent the equipment and, you know, we do rent, hire the equipment for special events and things like that. Uh, and so, uh, or sometimes there are problems uh, that you need to uh, participate in discussions to resolve or uh, new ideas, and new strategies, so on. So just so that, you know, uh, you could have some background to make right choices, decisions, and so on. So yesterday we started talking about, uh, we talked about camera and then uh, photography, and then we talk, we started talking about uh, audio. So the plan is just to finish that today, the public address system, the PA system, and audio. And many times, you know, most of our work uh, would be done, you know, either as a Sunday service or a conference or a seminar, some sort of gathering where people are in a hall or an auditorium. And so we have to use PA systems. Um, so it's almost, um, you know, something uh, that we always end up using, uh, public address systems. So uh, it's good to have some idea uh, and, uh, and, and uh, so you can have uh, meaningful discussions with people. So let's quickly review that part from yesterday and then move forward uh, in with some new information. Uh, so yesterday we were just waiting for the screen to show. Okay, right. So yesterday I just, we just said, you know, the sound field is something to be thought about. So when you, you know, when you're, when you're planning an event or you're having your Sunday services, now, you know, just tell the people, uh, your media people, your, your sound people, hey, make sure that the sound field across the auditorium is, uh, you know, is good. So that the goal is people should be able to sit anywhere in the auditorium and they should, you know, have good sound for them. Uh, uh, otherwise, you know, it's a waste of their time if they're sitting in a place and we don't provide good sound. Right, so the, 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 and it all depends on how you set up this this PA system, and uh, and so the sound people should be responsible. But at least you can ask that they make sure it's good everywhere. And um, we also talked about sound level. This is very easy to check. You can put something on your phone and uh, walk around the hall, and you will the auditorium will know what the sound level is in different places. And uh, typically, you want to keep it around at 65 dB. Uh, then it's it's optimal. It's uh, it's good, uh, but you don't want it to be too high. It'll hurt people, and sometimes it can even damage the ears. Uh, so now we're going to start talking a little bit about you know various parts of the PA system, the public address system, um, 
uh, yeah, we did this little overview yesterday um, in the front of house console where the mixer is and so on. But let's get into a little bit of the detail uh, and uh, we will finish with that, right? So generally, when you, uh, just to know uh, about speakers, right? So uh, depending on the size of your auditorium or your hall, uh, you will need the right uh, kind and the right uh, number of speakers. Ultimately, it's the power they put out and how that power is, you know, distributed across the auditorium. And uh, uh, that that is important. So uh, typically for small groups, you know, 100, 200, uh, 100 people, uh, small conferences, 100 or less people, lectures, you know, you'd have 50 people, things like that. About 350 to 500 watts of power. But if you're going beyond that, I mean, larger venues, more 100, several hundred people on beyond that, the power outage or the power, you know, that, that comes out in watts from the speakers, you need a lot more. Right? And that the sound people will be able to determine. But just from a arrangement perspective, um, there are what are referred to as the main speakers. Right, so sorry, these two big ones are main speakers. And then the ones below are called subwoofers, and we'll explain that. So the ones below are subwoofers, and these are the stage monitors. That means this is what gives sound back to the people who are on the stage, uh, you know, the worship team or the preacher. So they get to hear themselves and they, they hear how their, they sound. And these provide sound for the people inside the auditorium. So, you know, typically you have the main speakers, subwoofers, and stage monitors. The subwoofers are, you know, really speakers that provide lower frequency sound. So they kind of fill out, they make the sound whole or complete. Whereas the other, the speakers, the main speakers deal with sound at different frequencies. And we will explain that. So, you know, so, so we have um, speakers that are based on frequency range, right? So this, this main speaker actually within it has three, you know, typically would have three, it would have uh, what was referred to as woofers, uh, mid-range and tweeters. I mean, uh, they're dealing, these are speakers that deal with different frequencies and they're all packaged inside a big main box. Typically that's how it is. And the subwoofers deal with the lower end of the frequencies. They're kept separate, usually kept in separate boxes. So um, this, uh, the different types of speakers, the subwoofers are, deal, are, are speakers that handle the lowest frequency, right? So very low sound. Um, they, they are called subwoofers. Then you have woofers, which deal with the next higher level of uh, or the next lower level of frequency around 500 Hertz. Then you have mid range, uh, 200, 300 kilohertz. And then you have tweeter, which deal with higher frequency, right? So in the auditorium, really, uh, you would have at least these three. You have the woofer, the mid range and the tweeter. Speakers, usually they're built in, into one box, but they're all handling different frequencies. And then you put the subwoofer, which handles lower end frequency, and together they give a complete um, sense of sound to the people inside the auditorium. Okay, so um, you know, suppose somebody comes and says, you know, Pastor, our, our tweeters are gone, or uh, the subwoofers are gone, or the stage monitors are gone, uh, then you need to understand. Okay, what are they telling you? They're telling you that there's a problem. Uh, but they're using their language, you know, they're using the, the audio language. So somebody comes and tells you, you know, stage monitors are gone. Okay, you need to know, they're saying that these monitors are not working, right? That means people on stage can't hear, so they don't know, you know, how they're sounding. So that's a problem for the people on stage. If they say subwoofers are gone, that means they're saying these speakers are gone, they're not working, uh, which is okay, you can still continue, you can have the main uh, uh, main speakers and uh, you know you can still have your event uh, except that the sound won't sound uh, you know feel wholesome complete uh, for the people but it's still manageable because 
these main speakers within them, they hand, usually will handle all three ranges, the, the high end frequency, high frequency that are the tweeters, the mid range and the woofers, which handle slightly lower range. So they're all you know, typically built into this box. So you can still go ahead with your uh, event. Right. So when people use that language, you know, say main speakers, woofers, or subwoofers, or stage monitors, you understand what they're talking about. Okay. Um, so uh, that's these are just different types of speakers built inside. Now, uh, within the speaker itself, um, you have what are known as active speakers and passive speakers. Uh, ac ac active speakers are the speaker box also has a built-in amplifier. Okay, so they're known as powered speakers. So there's an amplifier built in. The advantage with that kind of a setup is um, if you buy an active speaker, that means a speaker with an amplifier, you can take it out anywhere. You know, so uh, when we have uh, small events, you know, um, you just carry one of these one of these active speakers. That means it's got a built-in amplifier, so you don't need to carry another amplifier with the speaker. It's got it already built in uh, and you can plug your device. I mean, you you know, or you carry a small mixer and you can plug in multiple equip other, you know, uh, mic and instruments and then go directly into the speaker, you, you'd be fine. So for small events, you can just, you know, move it around place to place. So that's an advantage of these active speakers. Passive speakers, you typically use them for big events. They don't have an internal amplifier. Um, they require an external amplifier, which we will talk about. Uh, and and uh, the sound from the mixer, the signal from the mixer comes in, is amplified and then put into these passive speakers. Uh, a full range speaker cabinet, basically it, it contains a woofer, a mid range and a tweeter in one box. You know, So usually this, um, this main speaker would be a full range. So inside this, there is a tweeter, there is a mid range and there is a woofer. So inside this box, so it's called a full range uh, uh, speaker, right? So they built everything inside one. That's usually what you would get these days. Now, uh, one variation, uh, instead of having these stage monitors, nowadays uh, people use in-ear monitors. So you will find uh, the worship team, uh, all the musicians, they have uh, um, you know earplugs and they, they have the, the earphones. Um, and he headphones there, or and uh, it's connected to a wireless uh, transmitter, and so each one has their own uh, ear inline in ear monitor, so they are able to hear their own their sound and they know how they are sounding and so on. So uh, you know you could you buy or hire these in ear monitors if you don't want to use these stage monitors. Okay, of course. Uh, it means that this is more, exp you know, you're spending more because you're buying one for every person who's going to be on stage. And uh, also there's chance of interference because these are wireless devices. The more wireless devices, there's chance of interference and disturbance. Okay. Um, then about the microphones that we use, uh, there are two kinds of microphones that you need to be aware of. One is the dynamic and one is, for one is called condenser. The dynamic mics are basically used for, you know, speaking, singing, uh, those kinds of uses uh, for on stage use. The condenser mics are, um, you know, typically used to capture quick sound. So, for example, you'll find these placed above the drum kits. Uh, they will capture the sound of the cymbals. So you'll find these condenser mics pointing down wherever the symbols are kept. So they are designed slightly differently uh, because they want to capture sound uh, that are fast transients, right? So you will basically have dynamic mics for those who are speaking and singing and all of that, and then condenser mics for this. Um, and in addition to that, what you need, there's some variations and there are unidirectional, omnidirectional. Unidirectional means they pick up sound just coming from one direction. And that's typically what we would use uh, for vocals, for instruments. Omnidirectional is they pick up sound coming from all directions. Uh, you wouldn't use that for um, speaking 
or singing, you would use it, you know, uh, maybe in a case where you're placing it near a sound equip, uh, uh, musical equipment as needed, so on. Okay, or if you're capturing audience response, things like that. Um, so typically you'll use unidirectional mics, dynamic mics for people on stage. You'll use condenser mics for drum kits and so on. Uh, there are also specialized mics available. Uh, there are, you know, a lot of small, smaller mics that are used for the drums. Uh, there are microphones that are specific for other types of instruments. Uh, now this gets into a speciality area, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, in the early days, later, you know, later on, you could think about these things, but just to be aware, uh, there are those spe specialized mics for instruments as well. And of course, there are wired and wireless microphones. Uh, wireless microphones helps people to move around freely on the stage, um, okay? So if you want to look at how the signal flows, you know, you, the, the sound uh, uh, from audio um, of sound is converted to an electronic or ele electrical signal. It comes into the mixer. And from the mixer, uh, there is an equalizer. And the equalizer, or there is, you know, there is, uh, there are uh, uh, and special effects that are done there is an equalizer and there's an amplifier, okay? Now, the effects and the equalizer, they work on the sound. So the mixer brings the sound together from several different inputs, several different mics. Then the effect and the equalizer and the amplifier, they, they work on the sound to improve the quality of the sound. The various frequencies can be adjusted. And um, then amplified is boosted and then is sent out to the speakers or the monitor speakers. Now, uh, in this diagram, you see these things are separate, you know, the sound effects, the equalizer, the amplifier. But nowadays what happens is you do get mixers that have, uh, you know, these, these special effects and equalizer all built in uh, into the mixer with some amount of amplification available also. Uh, built in here. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to have all of them separate. Uh, of course, in big events, when, when they want to really have high quality sound, they will have, you know, a lot of these things separate so they can control things uh, at a very fine level. But typically, you know, for an auditorium, a conference, you have everything in one, one mixer board. It's all built in and you can control everything. Uh, control the sound and then send the signal over to the speakers. The speakers basically convert the signal back to sound, but in a very amplified way so that a lot more people can hear. So you, you're getting sound, converting the signal, and then you're getting sound out. But the sound out is a, you know, a transformed, amplified, uh, worked upon quality sound compared to the sound that comes in. So that's the whole, that's what the PA system does. So if you talk about the mixer here, so the mixer mixing board basically takes in a lot of number of inputs from the mics, then it uh, works on the volume, the tone, um, uh, and uh, you can also route it to, you know, different places where you want the sound to go, speakers or et cetera. And then uh, you can you can you know have fine control over the sound. Now many of you would have seen what we have here in uh, in uh, ABC when you were here, but so typically um, a mixer board is like this. You've got your inputs coming in, uh, and then you've got different sections. You know, and I'm not sure which one are these are. So these would maybe control the volume, and some of it control uh, are the equalizers and other controls. So, so they work on the different frequencies uh, of um, the incoming sound. So you can uh, control that, uh, and then the sound goes out. So you have different kinds of mixers here. You can see uh, then many many uh, mixers that they. A lot of these things are pre-built into these devices. You don't need to know the details. You know, we leave them to the engineers, the people to handle. But you just know that okay, there is a mixer. If they come and tell you, 
problem with a mixer. You know, okay, they're talking about this, where all the inputs go and, um, you know, there's some something here happening. So from the mixer uh, or in the mixer, that's where a lot of signal processing is done. Uh, they will, uh, you know, they will they equalize. That means they can work on the different frequencies of the sound. Uh, they can um, also deal with um, different levels of the sound and they route it differently to different parts of the different speakers. So those, uh, those are all managed there within the mixer board. Uh, another part, uh, of course, are the cables uh, in the in the whole PA system. Uh, the cables are also very important. Um, just just and this is just a piece of information that there are different connectors that come in. Uh, uh, so uh, these cables have different connectors, which then connect into the mics or into the uh, mixer boards like this, they, um, these are the connectors. And just one piece of information is uh, typically um, you get what is known as the snake cable or a snake. They just call it a snake. So I remember the first time, you know, somebody came, one of the people came and said, you know, Pastor, we need to buy a snake. And I was like, what is it? What is he talking about? You know? So basically this whole thing, because you have so many cables coming in, uh, you get them, you know, all put together nicely like this. Uh, so this is called a snake cable or just snake. And uh, uh, it's all you're plugging in and then they go out to the mixer and wherever they need to go. So this is referred to as a snake. So typically they may say, we need to buy a snake for the, you know, for our PA system. This is what they are referring to. Right, so this kind of just gives us, you know, a good overview of uh, the PA system. So basically, let me just quickly review what we need to know is about the sound field, sound levels. Um, we need to know about, you know, what are the speakers? These are the main speakers. These are the monitors. These are subwoofers, and uh, within the main speakers are smaller, you know. Uh, there's a tweeter, there's a mid-range, and there's a woofer. Uh, that's all built in into a full-range speaker. Uh, sometimes instead of using stage monitors, people may use in-ear monitors. That's people on the stage. Uh, you need to know about the microphones. Um, uh, typically, uh, these are uh, unidirectional microphones. And if there is a drum kit, then the drum kit will have its own a condenser mic, uh, and sometimes if, you know, they, there are other mics that are used with the drum kit if needed. Um, and then, you know, there's a the cable that runs all the way to the mixer. Um, you see this picture here, yeah. So the mixer, the mixer has within it a lot of sound uh, effects. It works on the sound. You can, uh, and all of these are typically built into the mixer or you may, or they may, be a separate pieces of equipment. Uh, the one that works with the creates effects, an equalizer, an amplifier. And from there it goes to the speakers. Uh, they're the main speakers or monitors. Uh, so that's, if you have that idea, you kind of, you know, okay, this is what uh, goes into the public address system. Now, what I have not mentioned is that um, for very big spaces, like a very big auditorium or so on, they have what are known as line array uh, speakers. So those are, you know, high end. They are attached usually uh, up on the ceiling, or they're stacked in some way. And there's a the whole array of speakers, not just few, but an array. And they cover, you know, they make sure that they cover the entire space uh, with uh, equally distributed uh, sound, uh, so on. So sometimes, if you're doing a big event, um, they will say like, okay, we need a uh, speaker array. So, uh, so that means there's, there's a whole arrangement of speakers that, that, you know, through which sound comes into the whole big wide auditorium or the big space that you're trying to cover. But this is typically an arrangement for uh, a reasonable sized uh, auditorium. A uh, few hundred people should be good. Okay. Um, that's about all that I wanted to cover here on our public address system. Um, 
uh, next week we will get into the video side of things, right? We'll talk about a little bit of the camera, video cameras, um, then we get into live streaming, uh, video production, uh, just to give you an overview of uh, you know the equipments that I use there and how, what, what you just need to know. And uh, so that when people talk to you, you understand uh, what they are saying, all right? So that we will cover next week. Any questions, any thoughts here on, on, on this? Uh, anything that you want to know? Uh, are you all finding this useful? I mean, it's the first time we are doing this. Uh, I, I just felt uh, the need to put all of this information together uh, so that it can be of use to others. Uh, because as pastor, you know, I would run into all these things. And for me, it was kind of a learning experience. Well, what are they talking about? And then, of course, you have to make decisions. Uh, for example, you know, when you're buying a mixer, and you have to think about, okay, you know, uh, how many input channels do we need? Uh, you know, uh, eight channels, 12 channels, more. Uh, and it's always good to think about the future you know, because you're spending money. Uh, so maybe right now you're in a small auditorium, you may use eight channels. Uh, but what if, you know, you, you know, you're going to have more people singing or you're going to have more inputs coming in? Uh, should you think of, think ahead of time and instead of investing in an eight channel, go to a 12 channel or bigger? So these are, you know, these are questions, but you need to, if you understand, you know, what's the use of the mixer, then you can think about it and, based on your plan for growth, uh, you can decide, okay, let's just invest in something bigger than what we need right now so that it gives us room for growth and uh, you know it'll be easier. Then similarly, when buying a speaker, I know, you know we had to think, hey, maybe buy a portable speaker uh, that has a built-in amplifier, then it's easy for us to go from, you know, when we're doing small events here and there, uh, if you have one of these, it's good for us. Uh, you know, it's we just take, carry it with us and place it there and, you know, plug it in and start. So uh, if you understand that the speaker has, it's a powered speaker, it comes in with a amplifier. Uh, it's good use when you're wanting, doing a small event here and there, you can carry it and uh, just use it. So these are, you know, some useful things to know and uh, helpful when you have to make decisions on what to buy, uh, so on. Okay, any questions, any thoughts? Okay, so we'll close for today. Next week, we'll get into slightly different space, which has to do with video, videography, um, video cameras, uh, video production, and live streaming. Uh, we will cover that next week, okay? Uh, somebody could pray with us and dismiss us, please. Would like to pray. Dave, would you pray and dismiss us? Thank you. Okay, I'm not sure. Um, they has his mic, okay, maybe, yeah, Kiran, why don't you pray, dismiss us. Anyone else? You got your audio on? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, Prince. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Thank you the time that you helped us to learn the whatever we listen from Pastor Lord help. You see in our ministry that these uh, things is very needful in our life also. As we did ministry, Lord help us and I equip us all your gospel that we can reach out to them, reach out to the people. And I give glory this time all day I submit in your hand and this week also. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your time in worship and prayer in your local churches. God bless you. I'll see you again next week. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you.
Thank you.